Kathy Hochul continues her sort of self-immolation. Yeah, um, a reign of incompetence. <laughs> she <laughs> was, yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's just a tantrum, but it's also just sort of like really that politicians are incredibly vindictive. They have, uh, I mean, I, I think as a, a species, uh, no moral compass. Uh, there may be some that do, but it's not really worth, you know, uh, it, they're, they're an exception to the rule. Um, but what they do have is usually a, um, a political antenna that tells them that when they either do something because it's a favor for somebody or they do something it's in, in retaliation for somebody, they do it in a way that doesn't harm them. Kathy Hochul still very angry about the fact that Democrats in the New York Senate rejected a nominee for the top position in the top court in New York State who was less than uh, who was very shaky on a woman's right to choose, was anti-union, just all around uh, basically a conservative figure yeah, the in a one, state. I believe uh, LaSalle was the one judge among um, uh, the selection that the unions objected to. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and and again, remember, there's a good argument that um, at least a significant portion of the reason that the Republicans control the federal Congress right now is because in part of the uh, New York State Supreme Court, which struck down the uh, Democratic Party's gerrymander or redistricting. It efforts. was stacked by conservative judges in a very similar way that Hochul was trying to replicate by Andrew Cuomo. And that's why yep. progressives had issues with it and it it hurt the democrats on the federal level now for the sake of accuracy also understand it was a huge failure on the part of the democratic um you know party apparatus that that happened as well they screwed up on uh, referendums or purposely or unpurposely uh but but nevertheless so hochel was mad about that uh nomination being struck down and she just vetoed what's the legislation uh the uh, grieving rather? families act yeah, right here up on the screen I mean, so so first, it just in in terms of political optics, she's a Democratic governor who is trying to push forward a judicial nominee for the top court in the state to to break the deadlock to make it a conservative majority who is anti-abortion and anti-labor in this climate, and then also is vetoing a bill in retaliation against a senator who was opposed to LaSalle's nomination because he was the head of the committee that was responsible for killing it, the Grieving Families Act. And this and this would have allowed uh, essentially a relaxation of a statutory uh, damage, a st statutory limitations on damages uh, for emotional suffering after a wrongful death. It, it was um, meant it to you know, help was, the, the, the victims, the elderly loved ones who uh, who the the families of them who were killed in the Buffalo mass shooting a few months ago? All right, and um, uh, just absolutely shocking. Um, I mean, she's both, you know, awful <laughs> and, and also awful at it. Awful at it. That's a, that's yeah. what is the the twofer is unbelievable. And she's she, it's like, yeah, she's acting like Cuomo, but she's got none of his political capital and and. It's just wild. Like certain yeah. politicians act as if there's like a thing called a mandate, and then <laughs> other ones are like, uh, I'm here, I'm gonna roll. Well, she she was elected in the opposite of a mandate. Right. She was elected by far less than she should have been, and it was way too close with Zeldin. That's that was the. And consensus. she only had the benefit of incumbency because the previous sex pest had hand selected right. her to be his next yeah. in line.